Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, I stand here today as a member of the Legislative Assembly, as a cabinet minister within government, but most importantly as a parent, as a father of three amazing kids that like most and I would say the vast majority of parents would give our lives for our children. Those three kids, two of them, are currently in the public school system. One's going to be graduating here next week. Couldn't be prouder of them. Next year, my third one will be entering the public school system. And I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, without question, as a parent, I am concerned about the public school system. I am concerned by what I'm seeing in the public school system. I want my kids to go to school, to be educated, to learn math, science, social studies. I want them to feel safe. I want them to learn what it means to be part of a community. I want them to learn to be kind and compassionate. And I think, Mr. Speaker, in the midst of this debate that is very sensitive, it can get very passionate and heated, we can sometimes lose the concept of compassion and understanding. But I want to tell you something, Mr. Speaker. When I enrolled my two children in public school, I had to sign a registration form. Every parent had to do it. I had to sign on that registration form the name of my daughter, had to sign on that registration, another registration form, the name of my son. I had to put the sex, male, female, other. I had to fill in some personal information about my children. And everything I put on that registration form, at the bottom of it, I had to sign. And that signature meant that I, as a parent, am giving parental authority for my child to be registered with the school. But Mr. Speaker doesn't stop there. I also have to give a written consent signature for my child to have their photo taken in school. I have to give my written consent as a father for my child to be administered a Tylenol should they have a headache. I'll tell you how, how, how intricate this is with parental authority. My 17-year-old, he's going to turn 18, he's going to be a legal adult next week. He's been accepted to a university here in Fredericton. I'm very proud of him. And he was going on a school trip to this university that he's already been accepted to. He's 17 years old. And I remember the frantic call I got. I can't remember if it was my wife or if it was my son, but he said, we forgot the consent form. He's 17. He could not go to that university on a field trip unless I signed the form to allow him to go as a parent. And yet, my daughter in grade two can change her name and her gender, not just without my consent, but most importantly, without me even knowing it, to the point that the school would literally deceive me as a parent should I ask to know what's going on. I have a serious problem with that. And I can tell you one thing. The vast majority of parents in this province have a very serious problem with that as well. And I will not back down. I, will, I just want to remind the members in the gallery that they are not to participate in the, in the proceedings here in the House. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, when this debate first came up, I get it. I get that people were worried. You know, review of policy 713 is three pages back to back. It's all full of protections for LGBTQ+. So I get it. We first said, we're going to review this. People said, what does this mean? Well, now we know what it means. It's one section of policy 713 that, it, that invokes parental rights, parental authority. For the good of the child, not for the, not for the detriment of the child, for the good of the child. If the state thinks it knows better than parents, think again. 
It's not true. Not all parents are abusers and bad. Matter of fact, most parents are good. They would give everything for their child. And the ones that are, we need protections for those children. I agree 100%. And policy 713 clearly lays in those protections. So don't make this something it's not. So I thought, well, maybe I'm a lone ranger here. Maybe I'm off my rocker and thinking that parents should have some say in their child's upbringing as it relates to public schools. Well, I found out very quickly through emails that I know every one of you have gotten that that's not the case. The majority of parents think exactly the way I think. I'm going to give you one example of an email that I received. I don't know if you did or not, but you're going to hear it today. Because I called this parent, this mother, who is just beside herself. She's articulate, she loves her daughter, and she wrote this email. And I asked her, first I had to verify whether it was true or not. And I spoke with her and I got a, an idea that indeed this is a credible story. And I called her today and I said, I won't use your name, I won't use your child's name, because they don't want to be in the middle of this debate. You can see what's been done to the Premier and the Minister of Education on this debate. That's why people aren't speaking out. If you speak out on something with a reasonable debate and a reasonable concept of, of, of actually articulating your point of view, you're called everything in the book. And you folks propagate that. It's true. It's true. So I'm going to read the email, verbatim, word for word. My daughter is in middle school in New Brunswick. Several years ago, after suicidal thoughts at the age of eight, many counselors, assessments, and tears, she was diagnosed with ADHD and several other mental health disorders. As a family, we worked diligently with counselors and the school to set my daughter on a path to thriving. I want to be clear. My daughter does not have body dysmorphia, nor is she part of the LGBTQ community. This letter is in no way intended to take away or disrespect those challenges. When my daughter entered middle school, we had a plan in place. Unfortunately, the school did not implement that plan, which led to a mental health spiral for my daughter. She created an altered reality, changing her name while at school to cope with overwhelming stimuli presented with no access to her coping strategies. The school, at no time told me about anything. At home, my daughter had the structure and safety she needed, and I never knew the school had failed to implement her personal learning plan. Listen to what she says here. I, find, I found out from a friend whose daughter was also in the class that my daughter was going by a different name and had been for months. She even submitted provincial tests under this name. In this instance, I know she's not alone, by failing to keep us, her parents, informed, the school actively contributed to my daughter's mental health emergency. Teachers are not psychologists. They are not trained to spot a mental health crisis and they should never blindly allow children to change their identity without understanding the full context. Thankfully, I can report my daughter in her last year of middle school is thriving, top of her class, and now comfortable and able to cope with her surroundings. I shudder to think how different that path could have been had I not been informed by another parent. I know my daughter. I love and support her through all of life's challenges. But policy 713 could have ended her life by allowing teachers, brand new one at that, to blindly follow my daughter down a dark rabbit hole. She's not alone. I've gotten emails from other parents that feel the same way. Mr. Speaker, this is a passionate topic. I, we've debated so many things in this house. I've never debated or felt any more passion from both sides on this topic. I get it. But Mr. Speaker, if we can't, as a society, come to some consensus on the role of parents and parental authority, we are in big trouble. I'm convinced 
Changes to Policy 713 is not only the best thing for both parents and kids, but it should send a clear message about parental authority, that it's the foundation of a strong and vibrant society. Mr. Speaker, I will end with this. The province does not own our kids. And God help us if we ever succumb to that way of thinking. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.